What's up, everyone? As many people know, the Apple iPods are the top selling MP3 player in the whole MP3 player market. And <clears throat> if you notice, the latest iPod is the iPod Classic for regular iPods, that is. And one of the reasons why it might be the top seller is because. They have small changes that force people to upgrade if they really want those features. Well, if you look at the generation before the iPod Classic, the 5th generation and the 5.5 generation, um, it looks like this. It looked literally like nothing different than the iPod Classic. The only difference is, is that these have like 30 gigabytes or 60 gigabytes when the iPod Classics have 80 gigs or 160 gigs. And really, the only difference between them is the UI or the user interface. And see, iPod videos use the classic, you know, interface only has color. But the iPod Classic, on the other hand, that has a split screen interface, which looks like this. And it basically runs in a way where you can scroll through all your songs at the same time. On the other half, you'll have the interface of the iPod video. And. But the problem is, is that interface is only available for iPod Classic users. People like me who have this, they don't get that interface. And many people have not liked that because it's a really cool interface. It's really handy. At least I like it. But luckily, a hacker for the iPods has created a custom firmware that imitates that exact firmware of the iPod Classic. And... I'm basically going to show you guys how to install that firmware on this iPod video. Okay? But just so you guys know, before you guys actually perform this hack, there's a couple things you might need to know. Um, some people have messed up on the install, and they've ended up with this problem called where they're stuck in a boot lock. Basically, it'll show you the Apple logo like when you normally start up an iPod. But the problem is, that's all you see. It's going to keep restarting and keep rebooting, and it's never going to take you to the normal UI. And I'm going to, just so you guys know, if you end up stuck in boot lock, it's not a big deal. You can easily get out of it and fix the problem. But here's some tips just so you, end up, so you don't end up in that situation to make life easier. First, make sure you have the correct firmware for your iPod. So when you go to the site to download your custom firmware for your iPod video, make sure you have the correct firmware, meaning if you have a fifth generation like this one, you get the firmware for the fifth generation. If you have the 5.5 generation, make sure you have the firmware for the 5.5 generation. Um, and also, make sure you have no other programs um, accessing your iPod at the same time of writing the firmware, like iTunes, programs like that. <clears throat> and also, make sure there are um, that you give iPod Wizard, which is the program you use to write the firmware, enough time to actually write the firmware. It'll give you a message when you're done that it is complete. And also, when you're done, make sure you safely eject your iPod. Don't just pull it out. I'll show you how to do that in the video. And if you end up in boot lock, I'll show you guys how to fix it at the end of the video, so just pay attention. Alright. Well, first, um, you're going to need to have everything set. You're going to need an iPod video, and you will also need iPod Wizard, which you can get at www.getipodwizard.com. You're also going to need um, the classic the iPod video to classic hack firmware, which you can get at drivendesign.us, and you're going to need Firefox to open certain sites. I have not, that's, well, that's the browser I tested it on, so it might work for other browsers, but I don't know. Alright, and this is basically how you do it. Alright, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to open up Firefox and download everything. So we're going to go to Firefox here. And once it opens up, sorry my computer's a little slow right now. Um, yeah. Alright, now that it's opened, all we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go to this website right here. Um, you're just first we're gonna download the iPod Wizard, so www dot get dot com. That's what we're gonna go to first. And we're just gonna go to the download page right there. 
and we're just going to download the latest version. We're going to save it, and it is done. All right. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the next site to download the actual firmware, which is www.drivendesign.us. And now that we're here, we're just going to go to iPod. Okay, I guess we, and then we go to Classic right there. And here's the firmware right there. Okay. And basically when we're here, we're just going to download the latest one. So for me, it's fifth generation. If you have a 5.5 generation, download the one below it, this one right here. Well, I have to download that one, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click free right there. And then we just have to wait the point six minutes for it to finish. So we're just going to wait it through. Alright, now that it's done, we're just going to go ahead here and type in. Okay. Now we're going to click save to disk and just let it save there. It's only 6 megabytes, so it won't take too long. Alright, and now that we have all this, we're going to go ahead and close the internet. We don't need that anymore. Yes, close tabs. And yeah, and then we're just going to go to my downloads area. And, and now that we have them both, we will extract them both. There's the video, or there's the firmware. And here is that. Okay, and now that we have them both here, 